Is this Russian propaganda? Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. We are risking a very fast, very radioactive World War III to defend the democracy of a nation whose government bans opposition parties, imprisons political opponents, shuts down opposition media, and takes all its orders from Washington due to a U.S.-backed coup in 2014. Defending Ukrainian democracy makes as much sense as defending Mongolian seaports. The powers responsible for destroying Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and Yemen are the same powers we are trusting to carefully navigate extremely delicate nuclear brinkmanship escalations without ending the world. Relax, nobody's gonna start a nuclear war is a belief that is premised upon the assumption that the empire which laid waste to those nations, while destroying our environment and making everyone crazy and miserable, is competent enough to walk that precarious and unpredictable tightrope. I keep getting comments like, You're saying we just can't strike Russia at all? Just because they have nukes? Yes! Fucking duh! What are you, an idiot? What the fuck is wrong with people? Did everyone forget what nuclear weapons are? Did schools stop teaching this or something? You can't fix a problem you don't understand. And right now with Ukraine, the entire Western political media class is pouring a tremendous amount of energy into keeping people from understanding the problem. If they were telling us the truth about Russia, they wouldn't be censoring Russian media. Kinda odd how defending freedom and democracy requires such copious amounts of censorship. Don't worry, I'm sure all those socialist and anti-war Americans that were platformed by RT America can just get jobs criticizing the murderous and corruption of their government in the free press of the Western mainstream media. I wonder if we should be concerned that the entire Western world is propagandizing and censoring like it's on war footing. Socialists and anti-imperialists should never accept platforms on Russian media to get heard. They should wait until a respectable Western mainstream outlet agrees to platform them, and keep waiting, and waiting, and just keep on waiting until we all die in a nuclear holocaust. People tend to overestimate the power of the U.S. war machine and underestimate the power of the U.S. propaganda machine. Remember when U.S. officials kept saying, we're not trying to start a war, we're trying to prevent one, while refusing to make reasonable, low-cost concessions that would have prevented a war? Then, when war started, launched operations which served the long-term goals of U.S. hegemony? Russia gets control of Kyiv with this war, while the U.S. gets international consensus for unprecedented economic warfare and support for NATO, plus giving Moscow another Afghanistan. NATO powers could have prevented this war, but chose to egg it on instead. Looks like a classic sacrifice a pawn to get the queen move. Choose one. A. It's a coincidence that we were bombarded by hysterical anti-Russia narratives for five years before this started. B. Bogus Russia scandals were cooked up by U.S. intelligence to start manufacturing consent for a confrontation with Russia to preserve U.S. unipolar hegemony. It would bring a lot of clarity for a lot of people if we replaced the term no-fly zone with directly attack the Russian military zone. Whataboutism is a common misspelling of damning evidence that Western powers are lying about their motives and values. Yes, smart internet person, I love Vladimir Putin. Can't possibly be that I'm criticizing the known wrongdoings of the mightiest power structure in the world. It's that I fell in love with some random government official on the other side of the planet and want to suck his cock. It's not like the U.S. or its allies have ever done anything wrong so they couldn't possibly have done anything to give rise to our current situation. Therefore, it must be that I'm just cuckoo for Putin puffs. 
We're very good thinkers, you and I. Let's go watch cartoons. Of course, I am aware that Vladimir Putin is no Girl Scout. That's why I've been warning for years that the West's refusal to pursue detente could lead us to nuclear war. There'd be nothing to worry about if the guy was a cuddly, wuddly snuggle poo. Having a shit fit about someone criticizing the most powerful empire of all time for actions which led to a fucking war is a great way to let everyone know you have an infantile worldview and a piss weak argument. If you say you hate this war but get upset when people talk about the known ways the U.S. centralized empire helped cause it, then your interest is not in peace, nor in freedom, nor in truth, but in loyalty to that empire. Learn more and think harder about the role NATO powers have played in starting this war. Learn more and think harder about what sanctions are and what they do to people. Learn more and think harder about what nuclear war is and what might cause it. Whenever I talk about the frightening escalations and censorship and propaganda we're seeing in the West, I get people telling me that Russia is censoring and propagandizing even worse. Like, we're a bit better than Russia is a sane response to this assault on truth and freedom. If you feel the need to restrict and manipulate people's speech, even if what they're saying is true, then your actions aren't based on truth. They're based on something else, like geostrategic conquest. Everything the Empire says it opposes Russia for is a lie. Everything the Empire criticizes Russia for are things the Empire itself does. Everything we're told is on the line in this standoff. Freedom, democracy, truth, justice are things the Empire has been actively stomping out.